day is going to be uh, trigonometric functions of angles. So, you know, up to now we've talked about what is an angle, and now we're going to talk about sine, cosine, tangent, and all that good stuff. And it can seem complicated at first, but I hope to break it down so that it's not so complicated for you. So let's do another problem regarding this triangle business, and uh, we'll go from there. Let's say you have a problem like this. Here's a triangle like this. Okay? Again, it's a right triangle because this is 90 degrees, and again, there's some angle theta there. Okay? And again, just like before, I'm going to remind you that you can kind of always superimpose the, impose the triangle kind of on an xy axis, just to kind of remind yourself that you can do that. Okay? And then what they give you in the problem is uh, only two numbers. The hypotenuse is 5, which is this, uh, this line opposite of this. And the opposite, the opposite side is 2, but they don't give you this. Okay? Um, and just so you know, anytime you have a right triangle, you can use the, what we call the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side of a triangle when you only know two of the sides. Pythagorean theorem goes like this. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Okay? Um, where the hypotenuse is equal to C, and then these two sides, it really doesn't matter because they're added together, but I'll just say A is this side, and I, I need to solve for B. I want to find this side of the triangle. This formula applies to right triangles. So anytime you have a 90 degree angle, you will have an A, a B, and a C. C is always the hypotenuse, and then you can always find the other thing. So let's figure this out. C is equal to 5. Okay, so if I plug it in here, I'll have 5 squared is equal to a squared, which is 2 squared, plus b squared, which is what I'm trying to find. 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 2 is 4, like this. b squared is just where it is. So what I have is b squared is equal to 21. And the reason is I can subtract 4 from both sides here to get b squared by itself. And when I say 25 minus 4, I get 21. So then b is equal to, and as you always remember, plus or minus the square root of 21. There's no way to really simplify this anymore. It's not a perfect square or anything, so I can't really reduce it. And notice there's a plus or a minus. Anytime you take a square root, you have a plus or a minus. But the negative solution here, negative square root of 21, doesn't really make any sense because what I'm solving for is the length of a triangle. And so you know that, that a negative number for length doesn't make any sense at all. So really, it's positive, square root of 21. Okay? So b is equal to the square root of 21. So we had two of the sides of the triangle, and we used the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. The only thing here is you need to know what c is. That's always the hypotenuse. a and b can be whichever ones you want. And, and in this case, we just chose this to be a. We solve for b, and we get that. Let me erase this for now, because we've... We've solved that, and we've, we've written that down here. And now the problem proceeds just as it was before. The sine of this angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite is 2. Hypotenuse is 5. So we get 2 fifths. The cosine of this angle theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and I'm trying to write this over and over again so that it, you'll kind of, it'll kind of sink in and you'll end up memorizing it. The adjacent to this angle is just simply the square root of 21, which is what we found. The hypotenuse is equal to 5, so we divide that. That's the cosine of the angle. The tangent of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay. The opposite of this angle is 2. The adjacent to this angle is the square root of 21. So you get 2 over the square root of 21. And notice I, I told you before that mathematicians don't like to see square roots in the, in the denominator of their fraction. Um, so how do you get rid of that? Well, what you do is you just multiply this fraction by the square root of 21 over the square root of 21. Because this quantity, square root of 21 over square root of 24, it, this is just equal to 1, so I haven't really changed anything, but what you'll find is that 
When I multiply the top, I'll get 2 times the square root of 21. When I multiply the bottom, I'll just do it over here to show you what I have. I'll have, when you have two radicals um, multiplied together, you multiply the uh, insides, right? So what you'll have is the square root of 21 squared, because you have 21 times 21 on the inside. And anytime you have the square root of a square, you could just cancel those two things. So the bottom line is this tangent of theta, you're just left with 21 on the bottom. So when you multiply the square root by itself, what you end up with in the end is just the inside. And that's all you wanted to do. You don't want a square root in, in the denominator. Mathematicians just don't like that.